everybody, Fiber Spider back again with another video just for you. And today we are going to be making a bag. Very simple, very quick, and I really couldn't be happier with the results. This is called furoshiki, and it is a traditional Japanese way of taking a piece of fabric, in this case a square, and folding it and knotting it to create a bag or a wrapping for a gift. Really, really love this, and I think you guys are going to like it too. Yeah. So, for this particular piece, I didn't have a large square of prepared fabric all ready to go. So, I went through my stash and I took out a yard and I folded it and then folded it again and then cut it down so that it was nice and squared up. And then I decided to do I I decided to do this by hand to make a hem all the way around the piece with a blind hem stitch. And I'm going to show you how to do that later. It's really quite simple, believe it or not. Uh, you could do that with a sewing machine. That's fine too. But I figured there was so little sewing involved with the bag that, you know, I just wanted to go the extra mile and do it for my own gratification. And I'm, I'm really quite happy with the results. Yeah, so I'm going to show you a little bit here. So this is the inside where I did some, some hemming. And this is what it looks like on the exterior. You know, it's practically invisible. You know, really love it. Now, granted, uh, it, it, the stitches are practically invisible because I used a thread that went really well with the fabric. Later, I'm going to show you uh, contrasting uh, fabric with thread. And yeah, the stitches show up, but, and my stitching isn't perfect. I'm an enthusiastic novice, but it creates a bag. <laughs> and it's actually got a fair amount of space considering it's not a very big bag. You know, like if you want to take your yarn with you, or if you think that, you know, you're not going to like that color later on, well, there's room for more. Or, you know, if you need to bring a friend with you to help you make your decisions, well, there's, there's room for them too. Yeah. See? Hello. <laughs> You know, it's, it's got a fair amount of room, considering this isn't a very, very big piece of fabric. Um, I have seen bags of this sort where they use a much bigger piece and you can fit this over your shoulder, no problem. But you are going to need a much bigger piece of fabric. Granted, uh, this is just with the one piece. I imagine that you could quite easily take more than one piece, seam it together, um, I just wanted to keep this nice and continuous with this particular project. At any rate, enough of my yimmer yammering. Let me show you how to make the bag. Hmm. Alrighty, so I have my fabric laid out and it is approximately about like 33-ish inches squared. Keep in mind that if you need to do a hem all the way around your project, it is going to eat up a little bit of the dimensions of your fabric because you take up roughly about a half an inch or so from each side of your piece. So that will cut down the dimensions just a little bit, but it's worth it. So what you're going to want to do is lay it out flat with the pretty side of the print facing up because that's going to be showing on the outside later. So I'm going to start by folding our piece into a triangle, just folding it in half. For those of you that have watched some of my origami videos, this will seem perhaps a lot easier. So just matching it up so that it is a folded triangle. Does not have to be exact, but this this next step is a little bit important as far as getting the symmetry right. So going to take 
these two corners and bring them up to the tip, the tip of the triangle. So just bring it up. It does not have to be ironed and pressed and crisp. No, it's fine. <laughs> so this is going to give you the basic dimensions of the bag. Now at this point, taking one of these tips and where this fold is, you want to grab with your hand. I like, personally, I like to grab with my opposing hand so it doesn't go any further. So grab the fabric and we're going to create a knot, a very simple knot. And believe it or not, in spite of putting knots in this fabric several times, it's very easy to undo the knots and you know, re recalibrate them. So just pulling your tail and creating a knot, a little bunny ear. Yep. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. And again, I like to go in with my opposing hand, grab the fabric, wrap it around my hand, through the loop, and pull. Now at this point, you want to try to make sure that your knots to tails ratio is about the same. Keep it even. There we go. Very nice. At this point, we are going to flip this inside out. Now, easiest way to do that, open these two flaps flip it over, take these knots, pop them inside, grab these two, ta-da! <laughs> we have the makings of a bag. And if you push your hand down, gives it some depth, and we have the beginnings of our bag. The only thing left to do now is to tie it closed. Now, if you have a rather large item, you might want to put the item in first and then tie the bag. It's very easy to undo the ties, not a problem whatsoever. Um, so if you have something really big, put it in first, then do the ties, or, you know, we can do the ties and then stuff the bag. So. The next step is important because it's sort of a special knot in order for it to look really nice. So I'm going to show you that up close. Okay, so to finish the top of the bag, you grab both of your tails here and going to basically create a, a square knot so that the end result is the tails will run parallel to your handles and it looks really nice. Otherwise, they're all in every which way direction. So what I do is I'll take the, the right, drape it over the left, and then under and through. And then for symmetry, the left over the right and bottom and through. And if you've done this correctly, The little tails run parallel to the handle of your bag, which I absolutely love. Now, like I said, this is really easy to undo the knot. If you want to redo it, not a problem. So I'm going to show you that again. So taking the right over the left, under and through the left, over the right, under, and through, and then pull. Ta -da! Now, if you don't do it this particular way, then it is going to create a bit of a weird knot. And now I'm having difficulty getting it out. <laughs> uh, it just takes a second. There we go. So if you were to, you know, do this in sort of like the, you know, the 
the way I've always done knots when I'm knotting thread for, for sewing, you know, you know, just like this. And then doing the same thing again with right over left. You know, if you do this, always ends up running perpendicular, you know, but if you do it where it's right over left and then left over right, it creates a really nice looking knot. So not, not to stress the point too much, but it does work out really, really nicely. All right. So that is how to do the, the basic construction of your bag. Now I'm going to show you how to do the blind hem stitch if you want to do it by hand, or you could take it over to your sewing machine and do it that way, either or. All right. Hello again. All right, so to make my bag, I used, it was a yard of fabric that I then cut into a square, and then I had those edges to deal with. Now, granted, I could have gone to the machine and hemmed it on the machine, but I decided to do it by hand uh, because since the rest of the bag wasn't sewn, I figured I, I could do, you know, some sewing on this. So I decided to hem this by hand using a blind hem stitch. And that's what I'm going to show you now. Now, this is the outside edge, and you can just vaguely see some little stitches right there. You know, it's pretty imperceptible. And then on the inside, that's where those itty bitty little stitches are. And I could not be more pleased with the job that I did. This is actually the first time that I hemmed something and also did it by hand, no less. It was actually really easy, really quick. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now, what you're going to want to do, actually, is use a thread that is similar to the color of fabric. That way, it really, really is imperceptible, unless if you're really, really looking. Um, me, I'm going to be using this darker color of purple, and um, I already ironed it, um, and I'm going to be using the same color of thread so that you'll actually be able to see what it is that I'm doing. So to prepare your fabric, first you're going to want to fold over the edge about a quarter of an inch or so, iron it, and then along that fabric edge, fold it down again, sealing in that raw edge, iron it down a second time, and then you are good to go. Now what you might want to do is actually pin this as you go every six, eight inches or so. Just pin it into place so that it's not going to go anywhere, and uh, then you will be all set to go. Me, I used safety pins, about uh, four safety pins per side of my finished piece for my bag, and it came out awesome sauce. So, like I said, all you have to do is just iron your edge down twice, and meet back up with me when your piece is ironed, and we shall proceed. All right, so when your piece is ironed, put a knot at the end of your thread and start by inserting your needle into this fold, sort of like a little cuff. So start by inserting your needle in there, pull it on up, so that your knot is hidden inside of that fold. Then, I like to get my thread out of the way. Then, basically we're gonna be alternating between the fabric and the fold. So we were in the fold, now we're gonna go into the fabric just a little bit, creating a very small stitch in the fabric next to the fold, just a couple strands. and then go back to the fold, 
around where we came out, inserting your needle into the fold, running it through the length of the fold, about a quarter of an inch or so. Having a little bit of trouble at the moment. I'll get there. There we go. So just a little bit, you know, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch or so, and then pull the, I was about to say pull the yarn, no, pull the thread through. So it travels through the fold, not on the outside. So then we were in the fold, now we need to go into the fabric again. So just a teeny little itty bitty stitch. And then back to the fold. I'm just working within the fold right now. And then push that needle through. And then a tiny stitch in the fabric right next to the fold. Okay, then from the fabric to the fold, run your needle through the fold a little bit and out. There we go. From the fold to the fabric, itty bitty stitch. A little stitch that's in the fabric and then we go back to the fold there we go and then from the fold to the fabric from the fabric to the fold. And it's really that easy. And it's even easier when you're not filming it, trust me. There we go, let's do one more. You know, once you get into the rhythm of it, I found it actually to be very relaxing and very meditative. Just going back and forth didn't really have to think about what I was doing or anything. It was really nice. And I finished my entire piece of fabric in just a few hours while I was watching some TV. It's really nice. And so you can see I've got all these itty bitty little stitches every quarter inch or so. Now, so this is what it looks like on the inside, the underside. Now on the outside, that is all you end up seeing. Now granted, <laughs> um, this, this shows up like a sore thumb, but that's because I'm using white thread on this dark purple fabric. However, um, if you use a uh, color of thread that corresponds with your fabric, this is almost imperceptible. It's a lot of really fine stitches and it makes for a really nice, well, blind hem. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope that this, this helps you out uh, with your sewing. Now, by no means am I an expert at sewing. I'm an enthusiastic novice, keep that in mind. But you know, if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, so there you go the blind hem. <laughs> I hope it was helpful. All right, my dears. So that's going to conclude today's video on how to make the Furoshiki bag. Really hope that you liked it and learned something new. I'm going to give it a try yourself. Really easy, a lot of fun, 
and you really don't need much to make one. Yeah. So if you like the video, please give a little thumbs up button. You know that I appreciate your appreciation as always. And you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, folding, making fabulous things, and take care of yourselves and each other. I will see you in my next video. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.